In this video, I'll teach you how you can master the 3D camera in DaVinci Resolve and how you can make smooth animations like a pro. Let's get right into it. So to start off with, we'll just jump into the settings and make the timeline frame rate 60 FPS, which makes the animations a lot smoother. So now we will just grab a fusion comp in the effects tab here, then just jump into the fusion page and then add a background like this to the media out. And now we can begin adding the stuff we need for the 3D composition. What we will start off by adding is just a renderer 3D, then we will grab a merge 3D, a camera 3D and an image planer. Then we'll just connect the image plane into the merge 3D, the merge 3D into the renderer and the renderer into the background to create a merge in between. And then just add the camera to the merge 3D. Now we can just go into the transform of the camera and drag it backwards a little bit like this. And now simply just go into the render of 3D and make the render type hardware render. And then we're just gonna turn off anti-aliasing which just makes the render time a lot shorter as well. And then we'll just re-enable it when we're done with the composition. Let's just create the background for it. So just grab another background and add it into the image planer. And the image planer is basically what converts our 2D image into 3D. And the same for the render of 3D, it converts our 3D image into 2D. So let's just press shift plus space and tap grid and add that to our background and just hold shift and drag down like this and then just turn down the major line spacing we just turn up the row cells a little bit and the column cells and then just turn down the blend quite a bit then you can just add a ellipse to it just to soften up the corners a little bit and just crank up the soft edge and now this looks pretty good now we can actually begin adding the stuff we want to animate so let's just copy this image plane and add it above and then just grab a text and add it into the image planer and just type whatever you want and then i'll just make this highlighter behind it so just grab a background and a rectangle add it like this and then just make the background blue click on ctrl z on this one to swap the inputs and then just size it down quite a bit so next thing we're gonna add is just a 3d transform and just add it right out of the camera and this we will be using to animate our first scene right, so just click on f2 and rename it to anim1 for animation one i just gonna zoom fully in like this go to something like frame 90 drag it completely out now we will just open the spline editor which you can find up here and then click on this to zoom to fit then just mark all and right click and choose out cubic which is an entry animation and this looks pretty nice Let's just animate this rectangle real quick. So just go to frame 0 and keyframe it and then go to frame 60 and keyframe it and then go back and drag the width down to 0. Then just go into the spine, zoom to fit, mark everything and then just right click and choose out cubic. Ready clean. Now let's just make the second animation. So just copy all of these, add them above and then just connect this into the merge 3D. Then you can go click on one on the merge here, scroll on the scroll wheel, you can zoom in or out. And if you just press on the scroll wheel and drag around, you can move it around like this. Let's just go press on this one and then drag this forward quite a bit and then over to the side, go into the transform of it and then just rotate it quite a bit and just drag this one over a little bit like this. And then just copy this transform here and add it right after and then just rename it to anim2 and just drag them over and then i'll just remove these keyframes this and go to frame 70 something like that and then just keyframe the c translation y translation and the x translation and the c rotation and then just go to frame 130 and then move it over a little bit and down and then just rotate this to whatever it says in this one so 31.1 and then just copy it in and then just zoom in a little bit more free now we'll just click on zoom to fit and click ctrl a and then s on the keyboard and then just drag up the ease in to around 40 and the ease out to around 75 or something like that this just makes it so it slowly gains velocity and then it drops out in speed so let's take a look at it I think we can move them these back a little bit, just the last one. So just mark those and drag them back to frame 145. And this was a smooth animation for this. Now I'll show you how you can do it with some objects. I'll just add this box here and you can find that in the description if you want to follow along. Just add a background into it and then drag the media in into it. And then we can change the color to white. This So this acts as a mask for the background. And then I'll just copy this text down here and add it here. And then I'll just size this one down a little bit. Got the transform, size it down. And then I'll just drag these over and add a transform. 
Let me just size it down and add them down in the corner like this. And now just make a box around these. So just add a rectangle and a background and make the background white. And then just add them to this merge like this. And then you'll just shake off the solid and then drag up the border width a little bit. And we just drag down the height quite a bit and the width quite a bit as well. And bump up the corner radius. And now we'll just make a arrow real quick. Just copy this background and add a polygon node to it. And then just connect this to the merge. And then you'll just draw an arrow and then you can just round off the corners a little bit and i'll just check off the solid and just drag up the border with a little bit so now we have made a pretty cool arrow let's just add the image plane right after and connect this one into this just add it to the merge 3d and then just copy the anim and add it like this and then just click on the reset button and rename it to anim3 and then just click on two on this one and one on the merge 3d so we can see it in, in each a screen and then just go into this one and drag it forward quite a bit and then just reset the C translation and just go into the anim here auto frame 130 or something like that e frame the C value and the C rotation the Y translation and the X translation just go to frame 200 and keyframe everything again and then just make this 31.1 because the other one here was minus 31 so we just cancel it out and then just zoom backwards quite a bit go down a little bit as well and then just go into the spine zoom to fit and then just mark everything click on s and just drag up the ease in a little bit and the ease out to around 70 or 75 and then we'll just animate everything in this box here so just go to these objects here and then just do a pop-up animation i'll just use the new anim from my core bundle which you can get for just 14 dollars right now and then i just will just go into the size and make a size on so it pops up on which frame let's say 190 so just go into the animation delay and do 190 pretty cool and then just go into the rectangle and then go to frame 190 keyframe the length and just go to frame 240 frame it again and go to the first one and just drag it down to zero and then draw on let's just move this out in the spine so just click, click ctrl a and then s and then we'll just leave it as it is and then we'll just do a quick animation for our text down here just copy this and just do size off and then do a position and just do 180 so it slides in from the side and then make this 200 and then just do blend as well pretty nice and then let's just make a draw animation for our polygon go to frame 200 keyframe the length go to 250 frame it again go to the first one and just drag the length down to zero and it draws on pretty cool then just go into the spline highlight all of these and then click on s on the keyboard and just drag up the ease out ease in a bit and the ease out as well and make it a bit later just hold on shift and just drag these over a little bit this looks pretty sick and i'll just add a glow to the text so i'll just add the new glow which is my own glow you can get completely for free in the starter pack and the links in the description let's go to the beginning and check it out this is a bit too intense i think something like this is pretty cool just drag these ones over a little bit and add it up here as well and then we'll just add some blur to all of these ones they are out of focus so once we switch over to this one here we'll just make this other one here have some blur so just go in and type gaussian blur and add it and then just go to frame 80 keyframe it and then go to frame 125 ish and then just go to the first one and drag it down and then just copy this one and add it above then go to where this one's begins coming out of focus and then just mark all of these and drag them over by holding shift and then the blur comes on frame 195 i think we'll move it a little bit earlier so something like this then we'll just go right after everything and add a vignette and then just turn up the softness and the size a little bit and then we'll add a grain just turn down the power and then go into the effects here go to templates and then just type chromatic aberration and then you can find it under the tools and this just gives us this pretty nice rgb split and let's just drag it down a little bit so it isn't as intense so it's just a little bit subtle and last but not least we'll go into the renderer 3d and enable anti-aliasing again and then we'll go into the settings and then we'll add some motion blur go to the first frame here then we can see we we get a lot of cool blur and then we'll just turn up the shutter angle to 360 and then just turn up the quality until you can't see the big separations 
as we can see if we just do one we can just have two separations but you'll just turn this one up until you can't really see the difference anymore so i find it at four pretty good let's just go back to the edit page and take a look at it so I go to playback and do render cache smart and now let's just take a look at it Now you have learned how to use the 3D camera, it's time to level up your animations even more. I made a full video about the best plugins I use in DaVinci Resolve, all of which I built myself. Some of them are completely free. Watch this video to learn more about it.